Hi everybody. Welcome back to part three where we build this mobile tool bench. Um, if you haven't seen the other parts, you'll find links down in the descriptions. Uh, also, if this is in the future, you'll find links for the next parts also down in the description. Anyway, we're going to get to work on this. We're going to actually put a top on this and turn this into a functional tool cart that we can then use to finish the rest of it. So let's get at it. Going back to our computer mock-up, this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Currently, what it looks like is this. And what we need to do next is we're going to build the side pieces that make up the torsion box. So first thing I did is start laying out some layout lines here using my ruler and uh, ink marking gauge. And I'm trying to lay out where I want to drill all the holes in the side pieces. And then I'm going to pin nail the two boards together so I can drill them as one set. And then using a two inch Forstner bit over on the drill press, I'm going to go ahead and drill all these holes. Uh, dust collection here is uh, is hard because it throws off these big chips and I'm trying my best, but it's never the, never never works great. But so lots of cleanup I have to do. Next, I'm going to move on to installing the side pieces. So it gets generous amounts of glue, and then I'm just going to simply use a couple pin nails and clamps to hold it all in place uh, until the glue dries. With these two pieces installed, it's time to install the support pieces, which are going to support the bottom of the torsion box. So they get drilled with uh, three screws, um, countersunk screws and glued, and I just go ahead and install those in place. So that's when I discovered an issue. As I was checking the clearance for the planer, I realized a design problem. One, in my mind, I thought that the planer stopped at the top of the screw post, but it doesn't. It extends well, well below, above that. So if I stop where the bottom board would install, I would only get about three inches of capacity on the, on the planer, which I don't want. Um, so because of that, I need to make a change. And to make that change, I need to remove these side pieces and redesign them. So I kind of went with a five hole design and this will allow me to um, have more spaces for clamps to go in without the elongated design that can be a little weaker. The biggest change comes on the back side. And here you can see I've cut a relief out for the dust port to settle into when you raise it. This design also means I'm going to eliminate the bottom panel of the torsion box because otherwise I wouldn't, it would basically reduce the clearance I would have on the planer. And here you can see a better view of that design change on the back to accommodate that dust port. Okay, with those issues figured out, I'm going to move on to installing the, the base portion of the top. So that's the plywood underlayment. And then we'll install the three quarter inch melamine top that's going to be our final work surface. So first I'm going to cut the three quarter inch sheet down on the table saw. And then I'm going to cross cut it with a track saw. And then I'm going to repeat the process with the melamine top using the same exact settings. And then, then cut that on the cross saw as well. And then finally we're going to cut the pieces that are going to make up the little side piece on the other side of the saw. Before I install anything, I want to give all the top pieces a good sanding to make sure everything is nice and even and flush. Next, I'm going to move on to installing the side piece. Um, and to do that, first I'm going to drill three screws through the bottom. And this is just going to allow me to basically know where to screw the top into. And then I'm going to glue, screw, and tack the uh, top piece in place. The reason I drilled the screws to the bottom is because the melamine top, um, first, melamine doesn't glue very well. Um, and second, I want to be able to ever remove it if it ever gets chewed up in the future. So by screwing it in from the bottom, I can remove it and replace it if it ever needs to be, you know, changed later on in the future. And this is what it looks like installed. Okay, I'm going to repeat the exact same procedure on the other side. So I'm going to put the plywood in place, make sure it's all even. I'm going to uh, brad nail it in place, and then I'm going to go through and countersink some screws and then drive some wood screws in from the top to lock it all down. Okay, with all the screws in place, I can remove all the clamps, and then we can basically move on to um, installing the melamine top. This is going to install exactly the same way as the other one. I'm going to get it in place, line it up, and then I'm going to first screw it in from the sides there where I've got access, and then I'll reach up underneath and put some screws down through the middle to keep it from warping or bowing. And this is also the melamine top can be replaced in the future if it ever gets damaged. Okay, and here we go. We have the tops on. I've gone ahead and taken the table saw off its old base and stuck it in here temporarily so I can check, check everything to make sure everything lines up. Next, I gave everything a full sanding, and this was to remove any old glue um, that may have been dripped down the frame or wiped on the frame, and also to make sure everything was nice and even and lined up. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the saw back out because I'm going to have to cut some spacers for it, and I'll explain that here in a minute. One edge had a slight overhang, so I used a router to flush trim it. Next, we're going to move on. We need to 
create some spacers for the saw. So my saw originally had plastic spa or plastic feet plus adjusters. Those have long since gone since I had this on, installed on that other base. So I need to make up that difference and it's about a one inch difference. And so the easiest way for me to do that is to use a piece of three quarter inch stock or three quarter inch plywood and a piece of quarter inch plywood. And that'll give me the one inch I need. Now I didn't just make a change in the plans to account for that because I figured if someone followed the plans and they had the same saw and they still had their adjusters and feet on, then that would cause a problem. So rather than that, I left it at the normal stock height and then I'll just create a spacers for my particular installation. So now that I know how much space I need, um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the saw from the base and we're gonna go ahead and cut some spacers to fit in here for the uh, saw to sit on. So what I did is I cut a piece of um, two inch wide stock out of three quarter inch, some of the scrap three quarter inch plywood. And it's basically as wide as the base is here. And I'm kind of lining it up. When I had the saw in there, I made some marks to where the, the outer rails of that saw sat. And I can use this to kind of line up to kind of make sure the rails sit firmly on these plywood spacers. I'm not going to glue these in. I'm just going to basically uh, countersink some screws and then um, just screw them in place with some wood screws. And this is so if I ever need to make a change later on, I can, um, since these are just pretty much just spacer blocks. Next, I cut down some quarter inch spacers to make up that little bit of gap I still needed. And I cut these as separate little pieces and place them over the three quarter inch spacers. And this is so I could access those screws if I ever needed to replace those spacers. And then I use the, uh, put the saw back down to give it some weight so until that glue dries. Next, we're gonna bolt down the uh, saw. And to do that, I'm gonna basically uh, get the saw lined up, make sure the sliding mechanism is in binding, and then we're gonna pre-drill some holes through the spacers, through the actual holes already in the frame of the saw, and then use some lag bolts and washers to basically secure it in place, checking to make sure the alignment doesn't move as we put each bolt in. Next, I'm going to move on to installing the folding side tables. This consists of the folding steel brackets, spacers for the back table, plywood base, and then finally the melamine top. So here I'm cutting down the plywood for the back table and then following up with the melamine for the back table and then finally the plywood and melamine for the side table. Next I need to cross cut some of these pieces to length so I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, track saw and go ahead and cut those. Next, I'm going to move on to installing the steel brackets. And here a squeeze clamp works great to hold it in place. And what I'm doing is basically kind of holding it in place with the squeeze clamp, using a hammer to kind of nudge it and to get it to align to the bottom of that plywood base sheet that's with the main table. And then once I have that, I can use a pencil to mark the holes. Next, I'm going to mark the bolt locations and then pre-drill all the holes and then use the bolts that came with the folding brackets. And then I'm going to repeat that on the other side, uh, clamping, getting it all lined up, marking the holes, drilling, and then installing the bolts. Next, I'm going to install the plywood base on the, on the uh, brackets that we just installed. It's important that these brackets remain exactly parallel or they won't fold correctly. So here what I've done is I've clamped it in place and I've gone around with a little a marking gauge to make sure that my spacing is completely consistent all the way down. And then once I have that in place, I can drill in the screws that hold it in place. I've only installed the screws on the very end because what I want to do is get the melamine top on and get it lined up and clamped in place. And now I'm going to use longer screws that are going to go all the way through the brackets and into that melamine shelf. So these are, I don't know, um, these are inch and a half screws. So they'll go all the way through. And that will kind of lock the, the melamine top the base and the brackets together as one piece. And if I ever need to replace the melamine, it's just screwed in place. So I can just unscrew it and replace it if it ever gets damaged. Next, I'm gonna move on to installing the back shelf. And to do that, I've built this little jig because the folding bracket needs to kind of reach around the sliding mechanism on the saw. So to do that, it's gonna be very hard to line that up. So by building this jig, which is representative of the layers above it, I can get the placement exactly where I need it. So you can see here, now I'm using that as a top reference, I can now go ahead and install the bracket just like I did before on the other table. And then I repeat it with the other side. Sorry, the camera angle is here a little bad, but I repeat that at exactly the same procedure on the other side.
Because this bracket sits lower than the other shelf, I need to install some spacers on the actual bottom base piece. And so these are just three quarter inch spacers and uh, they're about an inch and three quarter wide. And I'm drilling these in, um, offsetting the screw so it doesn't interfere where I need to screw the, screw the brackets into. And then with those in place, I can go through and install the shelf just like I did on the other side. Uh, here you can see I put a board in there to actually space it out three quarters of an inch from that track to give me a little bit of clearance. And then I go around and uh, install all the screws. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp the uh, melamine top in place. And then I'll countersink some screws and install some one and a half inch screws to, to basically lock the plywood base and melamine top together. Then I can remove all the clamps and give it a little test drive here. Um, one thing is this right now doesn't fold all the way because the adapter I have on my um, table saw for the dust port is sticking out. I'd have to remove that if I want to fold the table all the way. And if we do a little walk around, we can kind of see where we're at right now. All right, and there we have it. That's the end of uh, part three. We've got the, uh, the whole front, the top, the, the folding sides are all on. Um, and uh, part four, we're gonna build the drawers and a few other accoutrements that are gonna go on here. So um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit that bell button. You'll get notified the next time uh, the next part comes out. Probably yeah, four or five days, somewhere in that time frame. Also, um, the plans. The plans will be made available at the end of the series. So after, after the next episode, which is part four, the plans will be available then. I don't want to post the plans because if there's anything that changes, I want to make sure the plans that I may provide and make available have all the latest changes in it. That way someone doesn't start building something and they get upset because I make a change. So all the plans will be at the very end of the series. Anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in and watching. If you haven't seen the other parts, go check out the other parts. And like I said, give me a like, give me a comment, let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.